is primarily to um, coordinate the different scientific programs that are going on on board, uh, the research and data collection. This is the first time that um, Ireland has carried out any survey of this type on the deep water species, acoustic survey. So yeah, hopefully things will, will go according to plan. A huge amount of planning went into this, and the survey itself will take 18 to 20 days, but that's only the sea time. Then there is the analysis of the data after, writing the reports, meeting, formulating the management plan to deliver to the EU to make sure it gets into policy. It's over 400 kilometres to their destination. And the research team and the ship's crew must prepare themselves for many weeks in the open ocean. They're heading for the Porcupine Bank on the edge of Ireland's continental shelf, where the shallow coastal waters finally dive into the deep abyssal plains. It is the 1st of February, a month when the Atlantic can be at its most unforgiving. The problem is that Orange Ruffy are not constrained by winter. In the sunless depths they breed at this time of year, gathering in huge numbers to increase their chances of conception. So wherever the fish go, the researchers must follow. The Celtic Explorer is Ireland's largest marine research vessel, owned by the state and managed by the Marine Institute. It's a unique purpose-built vessel for exploring the deep ocean, with anti-roll stabilizers and a formidable array of satellite and computer technology which allow it to work in almost all weathers. Below decks there's a wet laboratory and a freezer, a dry lab and accommodation for up to 17 scientists. Often extra laboratories come complete in containers which can be bolted on and integrated with ease. The Celtic Explorer also has a retractable keel which allows the ship to drop its own sensors to track fish and map the seabed, a vital function of this vessel over the years. I say this ship is, a, is a, an unusual ship. She's a diesel electric, a very quiet vessel, one of the quietest vessels in the world. Everything on the vessel is, was, was chosen, all the equipment was chosen with that in, in view. And uh, our mountings, our diesel engines, they're mounted on rubber onto a raft big steel raft and then the raft in turn is mounted onto the hull uh, with rubber mounting so you have two separate installations so you get actually no vibration through the, the hull and when we say she's silent uh, the diesel engine is just the same as any other diesel engine it, it produces the same noise but that is not transmitted out through the hull into the water. The species of particular interest on this expedition, the orange ruffy, are known to collect around undersea mountains called sea mounts. These are huge underwater peaks rising vertically from the seabed and would be impressive sights on land. These sea mounts create water currents around them and the orange ruffy are attracted in to feed and to spawn. This rare underwater footage from New Zealand shows the elusive and camera shy ruffy hovering in a column above a sea mount 1,100 metres down. In the gold rush days, it's believed that the number of ruffy circling would be in their millions, stacked for over 300 metres over any one sea mount. For their exploration this February, eight sea mounts have been targeted for survey from information given by fishermen in the Institute's own undersea mapping. All the team's work will be concentrated around these underwater mountains and the canyons and sea floor that surround them. Well, we can have a look at it when we get closer to it and maybe we can get the ROV in the water here. Make sure everything's suitable for that and, and uh, be a bit easier to maybe do the first run on that when it's shallower. The scientists make their final preparations for the very first Irish deep sea survey. Here. And also here on the BR60. And what we'll do is um, we'll work our way around in some transects around here. Space probably at four nautical miles and maybe about six 
Each sea mount will be surveyed in a crisscross pattern until enough information has been gathered to build an accurate ecological profile. It's going to take over 24 hours, I'd say, to do that. They've just arrived on site, and the sea is calm enough to launch the first of the team's deep water experiments, the CTD, which stands for Conductivity, Temperature and Depth. This device will sink over a kilometre below the ship, sending back a stream of information, sampling and testing the water conditions all around the seamount. What I do, I'm going to use this instrument to measure salinity and temperature of the water, and uh, then it's up to the guys who are doing this fisheries survey to see how they'll relate those data to, to the fisheries data. Sound is one of the best tools to search underwater. Sound can travel where light cannot penetrate, and sound can reflect back, revealing targets in the darkness. But sound waves are affected by water temperature and salinity, so the team need to know these factors before any sonar devices can be launched. And so the CTD begins its long journey through the darkness. Bridge uh, control room here. We've got the second uh, generator online now, so you can start both thrusters. All right, that. With a lot of our work, we uh, we we're on dynamic position, a DP positioning as we call it, which through the satellite, and that controls the engines and the thrusters to keep the vessel within a couple of meters of a, of a point on, on the seabed. It can hold the vessel uh, up to two meters calm water, and then in bad weather, we can even manage to stay within ten meters. It will take them roughly six hours to get a good profile of the water on the seabed below. And given the time of year, the scientists will try and maximise their efficiency by working around the clock if necessary. We can see uh, quite a big peak of Mediterranean water that's spreading along here. This is depth here, so... And that uh, warms salty water from the Mediterranean that's spreading along the 1,000 metre level. Uh, forecast is not so good for the, the first week, but um, hopefully it's supposed to. Conditions are supposed to improve for the second week, so we're keep fingers crossed. With the first phase of the survey complete team have a better sense of the water conditions below and how it will affect the sound waves from their sonar equipment. Their most sophisticated device is made ready. Called a towed array, it has a battery of sensors which transmit sound to the seabed and pick up the echoes that will reveal the presence or the absence of their target. This device was perfected in New Zealand specifically to look for orange ruffy and other fish that live far beyond the reach of sunlight. It, it's essentially a torpedo that we tow behind the ship on a long cable. It has a transducer in it, which essentially is a loudspeaker and a microphone. And we transmit a burst of sound into the water, and the sound travels underwater and bounces off fish, and the, the echo is picked up by the tow echo sounder, and the it is digitised and sent to the surface where we record it and the total of these echoes tell you how much fish there is. Trailer bridge. Yep, 